Hello ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from Red Adolescence. Welcome back to another video. I hope this video finds you well. And here we have it, the brand new release from the company Salvatore Ferragamo. And this one is simply entitled Ferragamo. So make sure to stay tuned. So this fragrance was originally released in 2019. The perfumer for this fragrance is Antoine Mason Du. I'm a huge fan of his work. He's made fragrances for Etat Liber d'Orange, Comme des Garçons, and many, many other brands, both designer and niche. So this fragrance was officially released, like I said, in 2019. It wasn't until 2020 when I finally got my hands on it. So I actually purchased this one from the official website as soon as I found out that it came out. And so I saw that ad on Fragrantica.com and then it immediately Immediately redirected me to their official website. I made the purchase. I think it cost me like $92, but I'm happy to be reviewing it for my subscribers today. And so it came in this nice little red box, which is the same red box that the Gancini buckle belt would come in. And there's actually a motif on the bottle because it actually has a nod to the Gancini belt buckle at the top here and also at the bottom. And then you can also see it on the front here too. In my opinion, this is their response to like a blue to Chanel. And so we see that a lot of these major designer brands are sort of releasing their version of a very popular, well-received, mass-marketed, fresh, woody, citrusy sort of a fragrance. And so when we're talking about Chanel, we're talking about Blue de Chanel. When we're talking about Burberry, we're talking about Mr. Burberry. Of course, Dior has Sauvage. And I recall Uomo by Ferragamo, which came out a few years ago. But that's not necessarily a wide appeal sort of a scent on account of the fact that it has the cinnamon and this tiramisu type of a vibe that's going on in there. And so this one is much more on the fresh side, combining notes of violet, bergamot, lemon, oak moss, musk, and there are a lot of notes to be spoken about. So I'm really excited to tell you what I get in terms of the smell. Let's go ahead and start things off by taking a very quick and close look at the presentation. So the box for this fragrance is very nice. You have the motif here on the front with the Gancini buckle, which does resemble the buckle that you'll find on many of their belts. At the bottom of the box here, you just have the name of the company. This is Eau de Toilette Concentration, and I opted to purchase the 100 milliliter size. On the bottom of the box is where you'll be able to locate the UPC, and I know the box is a navy blue color. The serial number is actually printed in black ink at the top here, which is almost impossible to see, and I want to let you know where the serial number is located if you're looking to authenticate your purchase. And what I like about this fragrance is that actually on the side, it does list all of the notes. And so you have bergamot, lemon, and sage in the top. You have a violet accord and violet leaf absolute in the mid, along with a leather accord and cedarwood. And then in the base, you have an oak moss accord, vetiver, and musks. On the top of the box is where you'll be able to locate the Salvatore Ferragamo logo once more. The bottle for this fragrance is very nice. You do have the name Ferragamo here on the front with this leather-like feel, and it reads from bottom to top. As you can tell, the cap is not a complete circle, so it must be aligned in order for it to go all the way in. And you can pick this one up from the cap because it does click into place very securely. The serial number is much easier to read on the bottom of the bottle. It's printed on there in gray ink. And you can also see that the Gancini buckle motif is on the bottom and the top of the bottle. This fragrance has a pressurized atomizer, so the distribution is nice and wide and you can control how much you want to spray. Let's continue with the smell. As soon as this fragrance opens up, you will get a burst of citrus, and that's one of the most likable elements about this fragrance. It's a nice balance of bergamot and lemon. It's hard to say that I ever get more of one than the other. They're kind of even keel. It's a nice balance between the two. If anything, I would say I get more bergamot because bergamot is more of a nondescript citrus note as opposed to like grapefruit or lemon or even orange. So it opens up with this really nice effervescent freshness in the opening. However, it is short-lived because those ingredients are rather volatile. Then it quickly transitions into a violet dominant fragrance. Now, I think perhaps one of the most iconic violet perfumes on the market is Dior Fahrenheit. 
However, Dior Fahrenheit, which is a late 80s release, to some people smells like burning rubber or leather. And despite the fact that leather is an accord in this fragrance, I don't get anything overly leathery from this composition. If anything, the violet variety that's used in this fragrance is more on the clean and fresh side. So it's something similar to like a carven pour homme, a green Irish tweed without that lemon verbena thing going on in there. Also a Lum Libra by Yves Saint Laurent. However, it's not as strong as like Wood by D Squared. That one is very strong on the note of violet. This one is more a balance of the violet, but also a lot of the ingredients working their way into the base. I know another descriptor that I noticed online is that of a metallic violet. Nothing about this fragrance smells metallic to me necessarily, or I would say it doesn't smell metallic in the regards that it might get compared to like a Dior Sauvage or something like that. So Sauvage is known to be quite metallic in the opening on account of that bright citrus, but also that use of Ambroxan, which is a synthetic component to the natural ambergris. I don't get much of that in here. If I'm thinking of a lot of these popularized aroma chemicals, there's perhaps a little bit of ISOE super in here, or maybe a lot of ISOE super in here, but it just makes the composition that much more likable. Like I said before, this is their take on like a Blue de Chanel, a Dior Sauvage, a Mr. Burberry, and many of these companies are coming out with their mass marketed, mass appealing men's fragrance. And I think this one definitely fits the bill. I think there's nothing about this fragrance that is inoffensive. There's nothing that will shy people away from you. And this is one that is guaranteed to get compliments from people. Now, I don't think that the freshness is done in such a prolific way as Dior Sauvage. And perhaps that's not necessarily what they were going for. They were going for something a bit more muted and elegant and understated not something loud and brash, which I think the EDT version of Dior Sauvage can sometimes be. But in the base, I get this creamy component that I actually really enjoy. So like I said, the freshness in the opening wasn't very loud and it didn't make quite a memorable statement, but I think it is understated and there's something to be enjoyed in the base of this composition. I know there's one niche fragrance that I would actually compare this to, not to say that they're of even quality, not to say even that they smell exactly alike, but it does kind of remind me of Udin or Udin Overdose by Zerzhov. This is a really nice, fresh, pleasant smelling fragrance that has a nice creamy component underneath it all. I would imagine that's on account of the coumarin, which is also found in tonka bean. However, this is not a sweet scent by any means, and it certainly is not a fragrance that I would group into gourmand territory. It's fresh, it's likable, it's easy to wear. It does smell masculine. It's their response to like one of these mass marketed, fresh, clean, masculine, contemporary fragrances. And indeed they were targeting a more urban demographic, especially when you consider the fact that the bottle was aimed to look like a skyscraper, which sort of conveys a more urban setting or an inner city feel. Nonetheless, I do enjoy this fragrance. I think that if you are a connoisseur of fragrances and if you're somebody who's into the more niche, artisanal, experimental, daring, challenging fragrances, this one may not pique your interest. However, I do think there's something very likable about this fragrance and it's one that I would have an easy time recommending to others. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. Now, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, I do find this fragrance to be pretty unique, but I know for some it will be debatable. I think it's unique when comparing it to other popular mass marketed, mass appealing, pleasant fragrances that have come out on the designer market. It doesn't smell explicitly like Blue de Chanel. It doesn't smell explicitly like Dior Sauvage or Mr. Burberry or any of these other fresh designer safe fragrances. However, I don't think it's groundbreaking and I don't think it's that experimental or different that it will pose a serious consideration to a lot of fans of artisanal perfumes. And so, but I do think it's very pleasant, very easy to wear. And the overall smell is one that will appeal to many, many people. And like I said earlier on in the review, it will be very easy for me to recommend this fragrance to somebody who is in the market for something new, but something that smells very 
fresh and pleasant and is easy to wear. In terms of the longevity on this one, I got about six hours on my skin. Projection on this one was really good for the first two hours, and then it did start to sit a little bit closer to the skin. Keep in mind, this is citrus heavy in the opening, and so it will last a considerable amount of time after that short-lived citrus, of course, and then it starts to transition into this sort of metallic violet creamy finish that I find to be quite enjoyable. In terms of the versatility, I think it's great. I think this is one that can be worn in the spring, the summer, and the fall. I perhaps wouldn't wear this one in the dead of winter, which is when this one was released, and so a little bit out of season, but it does work well for three out of the four seasons. So definitely hang on to this one, and I think, and I can see that somebody would end up getting a lot of wear out of this one. It is marketed for men, and I do find that some aspects of it tend to lean masculine. However, these are just recommendations. I think all fragrances are unisex. Wear what you like, wear what makes you happy. And then I can also see this one being worn more casually as opposed to professionally or at a dressed up scenario. When I'm thinking of fragrances to be appropriate for a dressed up scenario, whether you're going to a wedding or something of that similar formal caliber, I can imagine somebody wearing like Terre d'Hermes or something with a little bit more citrus, thus making it a little bit more refined. This one, on the other hand, is a nice balance of the top, mid, and base notes, and I think it's an overall very pleasant scent. In terms of the presentation for this one, I like the little odds and ends that they added to the bottom the little bells and whistles that I think make it interesting, kind of give it its own identity and its own character. And my final verdict on this fragrance is, if you're in the market for something new, something that smells very pleasant, something that is guaranteed to get you compliments, and you're not necessarily looking for something that will pique your fancy, something challenging or artisanal or overly creative, definitely check this one out. I think they did a wonderful job with this fragrance. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in. That was my review of the new Ferragamo by Salvatore Ferragamo. If you own or have tried this fragrance, please do let me know what you think. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Also, if you are new to this channel and you took something of value from this video, I would love it if you could support this channel by subscribing to it. It's easy and it's free. All you have to do is click that red subscribe button in the corner, and this way, whenever I do upload future fragrance-related content, it will get delivered straight to your feed. You never need to worry about missing any of my future uploads. And of course, that includes fragrance reviews just like this, top 10 videos, giveaways, unboxings, special guests, interviews, announcements, and a whole lot more. And as suggested by the title below, there will be a giveaway for a 5 milliliter decant, and this will be for the continental United States only. I do apologize apologize for that, but it's quite difficult and expensive to ship fragrances overseas. Go ahead and leave a comment down below and you will automatically be entered to win the giveaway. And I will select the winner in one week's time. I will make sure to pin the winner's comment to the top of the comment thread. So make sure to come back to this video in one week to see if you've won. Thanks again for watching. I love you all. We'll see you next time. Bye.